how are you guys doing today? So we'll be reading a book called What's That Sound? It's about two kids who are in a vacation home and keeps hearing very crazy and scary sounds. However, nothing is really as it seems and they find out what they actually are. But before we begin, we'll be going over some vocabulary. This is the book that we're reading. What's that sound? And our first word would be the word spooky. Spooky. And this means to describe something as scary. Spooky. So, for example, like Halloween, we have very spooky costumes, very spooky houses that people decorate. The next word that we have is the word investigate. As you can see in this word, there's like the I-N-N, -N, vest. Vest is something that you can wear, V-E-S-T. And gate actually is something that can be used in front of school to close or it's usually in front of houses. So in this one word, investigate, there's actually three different words inside. But what we're going to focus on is only the word investigate, which means to look at something closely and try to find out facts. As you can see, there's a detective here investigating. And there's another detective here trying to find out a question. It doesn't even have to be a detective. It can be someone that's just looking for answers. The last word that we'll be going over is the word shed. As you can see, there's a digraph of sh. And shed means something house-like built for storage or shelter. This is somewhat of a shed. And usually it's not really a big house. It's just a little tiny house that can let you put things for gardening, or any type of tools, anything you want. It can even be things that you don't really use, so you want to put it in shed. All right, and the book that we'll be reading today is called What's That Sound? Written by Mary Lawrence, illustrated by Lynn Adams. <clears throat> Here we are, said Dad, our home for two whole weeks. I looked at my brother, Tim. Isn't this place great? I think it's spooky, he whispered. So this is Tim, right? We don't know her name yet, but we'll find out. Shh, Dad said, listen, what do you hear? Not much, I told him. Exactly, he said. Peace and quiet at last. Dad loves the country, said Mom. Me too, I said. Come on, Tim, let's explore. No way, he said. He lowered his voice. This place looks haunted. So he's really scared. The little boy is really scared. Don't be silly, I said. There's no such thing as ghosts. You know that. No, I don't, Tim said. But he came with me anyway. About two feet. Then he had a fit. Amy, what's that n -n -n noise? He asked. I heard it too. A high, squeaky sound. Bats, Tim shrieked. I'm out of here. So this, we found out that her name is actually Amy, and they're brothers and sisters, Tim, Amy. And then Tim says, we are using our ears to hear. Everything we hear is a sound. Sound is a type of energy. As you can see, while we're reading, we'll learn a little more about what they are going through and some science facts. Hold on, I said. I pointed up. That squeaky sound is just baby birds crying for food. The mother bird flew over the worm, and cheeping, then the chirping stopped. Well, it could have been bats, Tim said. So they found out that sound was not bats, it's actually birds. During dinner that night, we heard a high, tinkly sound. Tim's eyebrows shot up. That's just wind chimes, I told him. It's so quiet here, Dad said. We can even hear that tiny little sound. Isn't that great? Sounds can be soft or loud. Sounds can have a high pitch or high, a low pitch. Soft, loud, low, high. Why does dad think it's so quiet here, Tim asked later. I hear a million scary noises. Name one, I said. That creepy tapping noise. So it sounds like this. He whispered. He scrunched down under the sheet covers. He's really scared. The sound was coming from the window. I got up to investigate. Remember that was one of our words? Investigate? So she's trying to find out what it is. I don't think you should go over there, Amy, said Tim. It might get you. Don't be a scaredy cat, I said. I pulled back the curtain. What do you think it is? 
See, I said, it's only a moth bumping against the screen. We heard them all the time at camp last summer. Now please go to sleep. But Amy, Tim groaned. I was, it was starting to rain. Raindrops make a nice peaceful sound, I said. That will make you fall asleep. After we hear the same sound a few times, we get to know what it is. Our ears and our brain work together. Amy's ears heard that sound before, and her brain said that's a mouth sound. So sometimes the, the sounds that we hear, you already know what it is before you actually see it. Because your brain have heard the sound before. I was dozing off when I heard a deep rumbling noise. Thunder. The window rattled. Something is trying to get in, Tim yelled. He was halfway out of the bed. So in his mind, as you can see the dot dot dots, he thinks it's a monster trying to get in. But the sister already knew that it was the sound of thunder. That's just the window shaking, I said. Sound waves from the wind from the thunder move through the air and makes things vibrate. Vibrate? asked Tim. Move back and forth, I said. I had it in science. Touch your throat like this and buzz like a bee. So let's try it together. We're going to buzz and touch our throat. Zzz. Do you hear do you feel that vibrating in your on your hand? That's vibration. Wow, said Tim. If I felt something moving, vibrating, I said. Vibrations cause sound waves. Soft sounds make little waves and loud sounds make Big waves, said Tim. That's cool. Sound vibrations go right into your ear. They hit your eardrum, right? Which vibrates. Then three tiny bones vibrate too. A liquid behind the bones vibrate. Little nerves send electric messages to your brain and you hear. But I still say this place is full of scary noises, Tim said. You know what, I said. You make more noise than all the noises in this place put together. Can we please go to sleep? So the sister is getting impatient because she's really tired. But Tim is still scared. Amy, Tim said, can I sleep next to you? He grabbed his blankets and made a bed on the floor before I could say a word. I said, okay, anyway. Maybe now I could get some sleep. I was starting to have a wonderful dream when Tim grabbed my foot. Amy, wake up, he whispered. Something's moving on the stairs. It's making a creaking sound. I didn't hear anything. Just cover your ears and go to sleep, I said. Then we heard something smash downstairs. This time, I jumped out of bed. We better go see what happened, I said. Tim shook his head. Okay, I'll go myself. I told him, wait, Tim said, I'm coming. So over here it says, you can muffle sounds by covering your ears. Very loud sounds can damage your hearing. That's why some people use ear defenders to block sounds. Even traffic noise and loud music can hurt your hearing. Not all at once, but little by little all the time. Which is why sometimes when you listen to something, you shouldn't try to listen to it very loud. Or else you're going to hurt your hearing and it will get worse. I put my finger on my lips. Tim nodded, and we crept downstairs. A bolt of lightning flashed outside. Then came a loud crash of thunder. She's actually, he's actually pulling on her sister's hair. Do you see that? Because he's so scared. Then Tim took my hand and held on tight. The kitchen door was moving. Uh-oh, uh, what do you think it is? Whew, there was Dad holding a fat sandwich. Hope I didn't scare you, he said. Who, us? said Tim. We looked at each other. My grumbling stomach was keeping me up, Dad said. Sorry I woke you. I dropped a plate. Are you guys hungry? No, thanks, I said. We're too tired to eat. So they found out that noise wasn't anyone scary. It was just their dad getting food and he dropped a plate. We went back to upstairs. Tim finally fell asleep and so did I. Even the storm couldn't keep us awake. They got so tired that they just kept sleeping because they had to. Dad's grumbling stomach was loud. Most other body sounds are hard to hear. A stethoscope makes them louder. So sometimes the doctor uses this. And this is how they hear your heartbeat. Stethoscope. Ah, 
and the peace and quiet. Dad said again at breakfast. Mom smiled. Tim doesn't think it's quiet here. I teased. He thinks every little sound is a ghost. No, I don't," said Tim. "Last night I did, but that's because I didn't know what was making those sounds. I'm okay now, I think. Good," I said. "Then no more talking about haunted houses. No more worrying about ghosts or monsters. Deal?" "Deal," said Tim, and he really meant it. He didn't mention ghosts even once that day. So now look, Tim is actually not that scared anymore, right? Around sunset, we went out and caught fireflies. Suddenly, we heard a low mowing sound. Ooh ah, ooh! What's that sound? I cried. It was like nothing I'd ever heard before. I couldn't help it. I was scared. So this time, Amy became scared, but Tim was became a little more brave. Right? He said, "Let's go find out." Tim shouted. And took off across the field. I ran after him. Come back! I yelled. The moaning seemed to come be coming from an old shed. Remember what I said? A shed is it's like a little tiny house. It got louder as we got closer. Sounds actually get louder as we get closer because the sound waves are strongest there because that's where they start. And the further we go away from a sound, the weaker it'll be, and then we can't hear them anymore. Maybe we should get out of here," I said. I really, truly didn't believe in ghosts, but if there were any, they sound like this. We can't," Tim said. "We made a deal, remember? No more ghosts." So Tim is actually holding on to his deal, dear. I mean, his his deal, and、um, Amy is actually very scared now. So they actually changed spots. I couldn't believe what Tim did then. He went inside. No, Tim! I cried. Even though my heart was pounding, I went in after him. I had to save him from. Oh, what do you guys think it is? Is it a monster or a ghost? A friendly old man with a tuba. Guess you are too heard me practicing, eh? He said. Mrs. Hubbard can't stand the noise, but I've got to get ready for the big parade tomorrow. I'm the only tuba they've got. So large white tube lower sound, and if it's small like this, like a flute, it's small narrow, and there's a higher sound. Were you scared? Tim asked me later. Scared? I said of a tuba. Give me a break. What about you? I wasn't scared at all. He said, "Not, not much anyway." We both started to laugh. The next day at the parade, Tim and I waved to Mr. Hubbard. Who's that? Dad shouted over the music. Just a friendly ghost. Tim shouted back. Mrs. Hubbard was at the parade too. She didn't seem to mind the tuba one bit. Then the wind blew her hair back, and we discovered why. She had cotton in her ears. So let's look around to see who has cotton in their ears. That would be Mrs. Hubbard. Not him. Not him. Not him. Not, not them. So it has to be her. She's Mrs. Tuba, Tuber, Hubber. Sorry. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. And now we have times for some questions. Ends. The first question is: What is the setting of the story? Setting is where the story takes place. Where were they? Were they at a a vacation house? B haunted house or C at a friend's house. Give you some time to figure that out. All right, the answer should be A, the vacation house. Remember, they're going there for vacation. They're not actually in their own home or at a haunted house or at a friend's house. Number two, what is the problem of the story? Is it A, the kids are bored and don't know what to do, or B, the kids keep hearing spooky sounds and are scared, or C, the kids got lost in the forest? Which of the following is the right answer? Give you some time to figure that out. All right, let's go over it. The answer should be B. 
The kids keep hearing spooky sounds and are scared. They keep hearing things, but they find out what it actually is and they become not scared anymore. Number three, when the kids heard a smash downstairs, what did they find out it was? Was it A, the thunder, B, their dad dropped a plate, or C, the dad's stomach? Give you some time to figure this one out. All right, the answer should be B, their dad dropped a plate. So they realized that the dad was making a sandwich and accidentally dropped the plate on the floor, which made a smash sound. The dad's stomach was making a grumbling sound, and the thunder was more making like a more hard leveled banging sound. Number four, which of the following was not a sound that they heard? Was it A, an owl, B, thunder, or C, a bat? This is kind of tricky because it's talking about the sound, okay? It's not really talking about what it actually be was, but the sound. Which one did they not hear? All right, let's go over it. The answer should be A, the owl. They had said nothing about the owl. They didn't even hear a owl hoot. They heard the thunder. They heard something like a bat, but were they actually bats? No, they were actually baby birds. Number five, what did Amy teach Tim about sounds? Was it A, sounds are always scary? B, sounds are made by vibrations. Remember what vibrations means, something that moves back and forth. Like when you touch your throat, you make a vibration while you're talking. And C, sounds are always loud. Which one of the following is the correct answer? Give you some time to think about that. All right, let's go over it. The correct answer should be B. Sounds are made by vibrations. And whenever you talk and you t touch your throat, it's actually making a vibration also. Or even when the phone is vibrating, that is a vibration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like my owls. I hope you like the book. I hope you like the questions. And I'll see you next time.